from here. So we have to redo everything. I have to redo everything. I call I oi me si chosi mo avdi doira secho call I oi me si chosi mo avdi doira secho I call I oi me si chosi ay 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 mo avdi doira secho call I oi me si chosi mo Rabbi, I see Tomer, he was here this night. I don't know what he's doing here. So I can't say the same jokes. Okay, we're going to have to mix it up a little bit. Who else? Ellie was not here. You were here? Yeah, I, I could say the same jokes in front of you. Leon was not here. Fine. So, yeah, whatever. Say it. I am going to read the same emails, the same jokes, same things. But I do want to tell you this, and Leon is on, so I, I got to tell you this. It's beautiful. Um, Erev Yontif, Tomer Levy, sent us a nice bottle of wine. And a few other people sent us beautiful bottles of wine. Uh, uh, Harry Shalom. That's right. I was going to say Shalom Harry. Harry Shalom sent a bottle of wine to every guy in the group. Not every guy. Five of the, of the guys. And I, I had literally the best bottle. Listen, to, I'm not going to tell you the name because then Leon is going to try to find out and send it to me. So it was a beautiful bottle. It was our favorite bottle ever. My son-in-law tried to convince me to save it because it became a, a, um, a what do you call it? No. No, it, uh, a collector's item. It became a collector's bottle. It's very hard to get. And tried, I said, no, it's Yontif. He gave it for Yontif. We're going to do Yontif. Fine. And then my wife says, I don't understand, Ellie. You told everybody that we don't have coffee. They gave us coffee. You told everybody we don't have wine and wine. But why didn't you tell anybody that we don't have cheesecake? My <laughs> Shoya. Three minutes later, knock on the door. Yisrael Goldstein from New York, from B&H, sent us this massive cheesecake. It was gewaldi. It was great. I think it's here in the kitchen because I couldn't finish it myself. And uh, whatever. So yeah, Baruch Hashem, she said it and whatever. I'll just read these two emails. They are from Atzi Shabbat, from uh, An Yontif itself. They had to, a little bit to do with Yontif. Each one said something. Dear Rebelli, this is from Ari Bloom. As we prepare for Zma Matan Senu, I felt the need to thank you again was I can't say I counted every day of Sphira, I can't say that I opened the Sefer every day for six weeks straight. This is very emotional. Six weeks straight, he, he opened up a Sefer every day. Now he's not going to say that he did Sphira, but six weeks straight. It's a huge accomplishment. As I said in my last email, that is the first for me since leaving Yeshiva over 10 years ago. Here's a person that for 10 years wasn't, didn't have that kind of Kvius, and now he has a Kvius. Every single day. Yoimi, yoimi, yoimi. It's not about the daft, it's about the yoimi. And I have you and your team to thank for it. I usually watch this year later in the morning due to the time difference. However, on a couple of occasions, I have been zoichet to get up at five for it. I very much enjoyed the experience. So I was very pleased to hear that you're starting an evening shear. I look forward to joining you on Zoom at 4.30 p.m. UK time. That is, at least, while I can keep that time free for it. What's 4.30? I thought we're doing the shir at 9.15. I just realized. 9.15 is real time. 4.30 seems a little odd. Maybe 4.15 is what he meant. Or maybe they told him 4, 4.30, but I think this, the time is 9.15 with the 10 o'clock Mayrev. We were accommodating Josh, but since Josh is with us every morning and he comes late anyway, so therefore we're just going to do 9.15 and he'll come late to the 9.15 shir. He'll come at 9.20 when we used to start. But... Um, 9.15 sounds like a good time. And Be'ezer Hashem, we're going to transmit it live on Zoom. So if you know anybody in America that doesn't want to stay up till 1 o'clock, they could leave work in the middle at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, in the middle of the work day, and listen to the daf. Here's one more. Dear Abeli, and by the way, that's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for Josh and his 10 friends that come at 9.15. 
I'm doing it because of this new technology called Zoom. And hopefully there'll be people from around the world at 9.15 at night in Israel time works better for them than the 7.15 in the morning Israel time. And like this, we could be Marbet's Tyra. All right, Zuck, the next email. Dear Abel Eli, this comes from David Block. He's a RBSA resident. I don't know who he is. Maybe I do know who he is. But it doesn't, it sounds familiar, the name. But I don't know. I've never, he should come, he should show up. So you said that you told him to show up. Here it is. Thank you for your sphere reminder. On the 47th day of the Oimer, I got into my car to travel to work as usual. I turned on your YouTube shear. It was 8.10 a.m. The first thing you said was to remind us that today is the 47th day of the Oimer. I suddenly realized that I was crazy tired the night before, and I forgot to have a Mayrev, and of course, Count Svira. So before traveling, I stood up, counting Oimer, and was good to go. In parentheses, Tashlum and Mayrev was later. Don't worry, he died my Thanks so much for the reminder. I was able to finish counting with the bracha. Thanks, David Black. So at the end of the day, we had a bunch of people, because I complained that nobody gave me feedback, we got a bunch of people that said, one guy said I reminded him twice, we reminded him once. Here's on the 47th day. That would have really been a terrible, terrible thing to, to, to mess up on the second to last day. So I'm happy that we were able to help. And Beis Hashem next year will try to continue that kind of minig. And now... We're holding that pe gimel amid beis by the Mishnah. Minayin l'svino shitahayro. So we're continuing with that thing of minayin this, and we bring a pasuk of that. The pasuk is not a real pasuk of a real limud. It's a asmachta. It's a, a good a good remez in the Torah. How do I know? And now we're holding middle of sechta Shabbos. Nothing to do with tuma tahara yet. It fits in with the theme. And the final thing in the theme is on the Fevav, when we talk about Shabbos, Hilcha Shabbos, that you are allowed to warm up water for a baby by bris milah three days later. How do we know this? And here's Minayim. Minayim is finish How do I know that a ship is tar? It's not Mechabal Tumo. I have a ship that's a, even a Klicheres, according to this part of the, the Mishnah, even earthenware, not Mechabal Tumo. If it was on the ground, it's Mechabal Tumo. But since it's floating on the water, it's not Mechabal Tumo. How do I know? Shenemar derech onio belev yom. So the Gemara explains. Pshito onio belev yomhi. Where else would a ship be found if not on the ocean? So why does the Torah say onio belev yom? What does, what's the Pasuk talking about? Shleim HaMelech says there are four things that I'll never figure out. You, a human being can't know in advance where the ship is going to head, ha, what path it's going to take, because it constantly goes off path. There's no highway in the ocean. It moves this way, moves that way, goes with the wind, with the water. So it should say, people can never know the derechania, how a ship travels. What's beleviyam in the ocean? That's where a ship is found, in the ocean. Of course it's in the ocean. Says the Gemara Kamashwalon Kiyom. It has the same halacha as the ocean. Mayom tar. Just like the water in the ocean is tar. Why is the water in the ocean tar? Because it's mukhubala karka. It's touching the ground. So too, Afsfina Tahira, a ship that's on the water, that's on the ground, is halacha of like the ground. And Mamela, it's tar and not mikabul tumong. By the way, you guys are zoicha to be here tonight. We're going to have, in my opinion, one of the most important lines in all of Shas. And Tomer, you heard it. It's good night to hear it again. I'm just, I'm giving a gdama. Maybe I wasn't so stark about it. I, I'm thinking about it. The more I think about it, it's one of the biggest yisoidas in all of Shas. Coming up in a few minutes. Chananiya argues with our Mishnah. Our Mishnah learned it from Mishlei. Pasuk Mishlei. And the Pasuk Mishlei says all ships. I don't care what it's made out of. It can be made out of metal. It can be made out of wood. It can be made out of klicheres. A ship is a ship. Always start. Chananiya says no. Nil medom is sak. Okay, so here's the Pasuk about sak. It says in the Pasuk, four materials. Wooden ware, 
oy beged, or garment, oy or, or leather, oy sock. Sock is a sack made out of, what is it made out of? What do you think it's, who? Which is made out of? No, it's made out of goat hair. Lomashana. Whatever it's made out of. So we have a comparison, the red to the red. Wood to a sack. Eights to a sack. Yeah? What's the comparison? Masak, metaltal mole verekon. Afkol, metaltal mole verekon. So basically, we learn two chidushimir. A sack is a base kibble. It can hold stuff. That's what a sack is. It's made, it's designed to hold things. So wood has to be able to hold things. You have to have some sort of hole in it. It has to be like a bowl. It has to be able to hold. Another thing, a sack, if you fill it up with everything you want to fill up, like these big, uh, what are they called? Balas here in Israel, right? Those big sacks you have in front of the house. You fill it up with cement, then a truck comes and takes it. So the design to hold very heavy loads, and if you lift it up, it's not going to tear apart. That's what it holds. You can lift it up. Therefore, everything else, wood has to be similar, whatever, it has to be similar to a sack. Therefore, what? Af kol metalta molivarekon. If something is going to be makabal tuma, it has to be able to be lifted up like a sack. You have to be able to fill it up, and have to be able to lift it. La fuke svino de eno metaltelis molivarekon. So, if you have a ship, I so happen to have a picture of a ship. So if you have a, a ship, try to fill this ship up completely. Fill it up. I'm not a scientist, but I'm telling you that if you fill this up with metal and whatever, put, put on it ton, all those um, crates and uh, what are they called? The, the, the lift. Containers. containers, thank you. Fill it up with containers. And then take a giant, giant, super, they don't even have something like that, but let's say take two of these giant cranes and lift the ship out of the water. What's going to happen? It'll crack in half. It'll break into pieces, into smithereens. Because the ship is not designed to be out of the water and carrying a load. In the water, it could carry a lot of things because the water is supporting it from all, the si from all sides. If you try to take it out of the water, it'll break. 100% will break. No shayla. Because... The ship is what? The hull is like this thick. I don't know how thick it is. Whatever it is, it cannot carry that weight that you put on it. So therefore, it's not what? The problem is that ships that cracked the water, the water goes on, it breaks in half. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, good raya, like the Titanic, broken half. Why? Because once it starts filling with water, it starts getting heavy, poof. Great raya. It's, it's obvious. You don't need a raya, but something huge cannot hold that kind of weight. The only reason why ships, and Tysus points it out all the way, the last, last line, the water is what, what carries it and, and keeps it. Okay, fine. And therefore, a sack is makabal tuma. But a ship is not makabal tuma because a ship is not like a sack. A ship it doesn't have the ability to be metaltal male. To, to be carried when it's full. So says the Gemara, okay, so what is the difference between the Pshad and the Mishnah, that we have a Pasuk from Mishlei, and the Pshad al that says it's, it's too heavy to be carried. Says the Gemara, what if I make, this sounds like a terrible idea, but let's say I was crazy enough, and maybe in those days they did it, what if I made a ship made out of earthenware, I have a ship made out of earthenware. Now, it would be a terrible idea to try to crash your ship made out of earthenware into an iceberg. It will probably snap into 100 pieces. But whatever, let's say you designed a ship out of earthenware to go in a little river. No icebergs. So this ship doesn't have this exclusion that we just mentioned of weight. Why? Because if you notice, the Pasuk only has four, four materials. Eight, beged, or sack. No mention of earthenware. No mention of metal. So if it's made out of something else that's not one of these materials, then you cannot compare it to a sack. 
if it's not a sec, what's that? Oh, wow. I'll show them. Hold on. We're going here, that screen, and then, uh, no, YouTube, uh, what's his name? This, these guys, just to show you what they're talking about. Hold up the thing. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> it showed me showing this. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's your, that's your shot. I see what you're saying. You're saying they're all, they all came from something live. Okay. So, Mamela, if I have a ship that's made out of cheres and I cannot lift it out of the ground, I can't lift it, it's going to crack if I lift it. So, it doesn't mean it's tar. The only thing that if I lift and break is tar is something that I can compare to a sack, which is wood. A wooden ship has this exclusion, but not a cheres ship. So now I have a big d distinction here. How do I know that a ship is tar? If it's made out of wood, it's tar. But if it's made out of cheres, it's tome. That's if I hold like Hananya. But if I hold like the Tan of our Mishnah, there's a Pasuk in Mishnah that says all ships are tar. I don't care what it's made out of. It could be made out of earthenware, it could be made out of wood and metal. They're all tar. End the story. So it's a big difference between Hananya and, and, and our Mishnah. If you say it's just a Pasuk in Mishlei, so it doesn't matter if it's made out of earth, where it's also excluded from Tuma. But if you compare something to a sack, these other materials, meaning wood, because you can't make a ship out of leather, you can't make a ship out of, uh, out of garment, the only one left in the Pasuk is wood. So wood is similar to a sack. If it cannot be carried when it's full, then it's not makabal tomo. Even though you cannot carry this earthenware sack because it's too heavy and it'll break, too bad, it's not in the Pasuk. Another distinction, says the Gemara, Inami Svina Sayardain. We have these small little boats that are designed to go in a narrow river called the Jordan River. And many of us, Ben Azmanim, and if you're in America and you come to Israel, it's very Kedai. You go up to the Jordan River, you go into one of those places, and they put you in a little, little blow-up uh, thing, kayak, and they, they, they throw you, that you... Actually, it's very interesting. They load you on the ground, and then they push you into the water and that's what the Gemara is talking about. Because if I could load you when you're on the ground and it's not going to break the boat, so that's not excluded in the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, This is I can lift you up in the boat, because it's a small little raft, lift you out of the water, with you in it, it's not going to break the boat. And I could load you up on the ground and then push you in. And then you take a nice little stream, you go through the, through the Jordan. Fine. So this, but we're talking about it's made out of uh, wood, not inami yomi. At the end of the day, I don't care. Ocean, river is the same thing in the Pasuk. Yam means a body of water. And I don't care that I can lift you up and put you into the water. You are tahar. Lamando where am I? So Hanina Ben Akavi says that the fact that you could lift up this boat, or like they do today, they load the people on the shore and then they shove them into the water, that means that it's tummy. Because now, like now you're like a sack. Just like a sack I can lift up and it doesn't break, and of a small boat that I can lift up and it doesn't break, will remain tame. But if you say it's because of the Pasuk that says, so it doesn't matter. Even if I can lift you up, you're still tar. Every boat and every body of water, you're tar. Says the Gemara, Omarav and this was beautiful that we had this on Shavuos night. Although... All the Gemaras, all the Gemaras, three Dafa Gemaras basically discussing 
Shavuos, starting tomorrow. Literally, the day after Shavuos, we are going into the sugis of Shavuos. But I'm of the opinion that we have to stick to our guns. We have to be Tmidim Kisidrim. Do one daf after a daf after a daf. And even if it makes more sense to do the next daf and jump back and go to another Mestachta, we don't do that. We go in order. Every day. Here's a good hint. If we're already talking about a sugya of asmachtas, and hints, here's a good asmachta for daf yoimi. That's all it takes is one hour, you learn the daf, you should never prevent yourself from going to the base medrash. But what the Gemara really means is that a person should be in the base medrash all day long. And if you miss one hour, you know what you can miss? An unbelievable pshat and a sugya that eluded Chachamim for many years. This whole idea of Svinas Hayardain, that if you have a, a small, light boat, is not Mechabal Tumah. Why in the world is a small boat not Mechabal Tumah? I'm sorry, Mechabal Tumah. And a large boat is not Mechabal Tumah. What's the difference? Who cares? One weighs a, a, a thousand tons, one weighs 25 pounds. That's why it shouldn't be Mechabal Tumah. It should be Mechabal Tumah. What's the difference? One day he shows up, and he says the pshat is because if I can lift it up, then it's similar to a sack that I can lift, and it's Mechabal Tumah. But if you would have missed that one hour in Beisam Medrash, you wouldn't have heard this beautiful pshat. So therefore, a person should constantly learn Torah even at the time of death. Literally, when a person is dying, he should learn Torah. The famous passage that the Gemara always uses for Talmud Torah, it's referring to Thomas Hamas. But this is the Torah, a person should die. Ba'oil should Torah, a person should die. Afilu b'shas misa, te'oisig ba'tairah. Even when a person is dying, a person should learn Torah. The Ben Yada asks, how is it possible to learn Torah when a person dies? A person is dying, how can he learn? What? He should pick him, he's a geysis. He's, 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 on, he's on a ventilator. He should pick himself up and go into the base measure. He should walk to the base measure. He's dying, what does dying mean? He's dying, literally dying. And how could he even learn? How could he utter words of Torah if he's dying? So he says, it doesn't mean li literally dying. It means that a person, and it's a big Musa Haskell for everybody. It means if a person is like a mace, who's a mace? A very poor person, a person who lost his job, he has a lot of tsars in his life, he shouldn't just say, oh, I'm a big Rachmanus, I'm a Nebuch, I don't have a job, and therefore that's it. I'm not going to go to the daf anymore. Al yim na'atzmoy, a person should always constantly learn even when he's Choshev Kemes. Even if he has Tsaras, he has some body deformity, he lost his job, he has no money, Corona, whatever it is, Al-Yim Na'atzmoy, not Torah. should always be learning Torah. He doesn't say it, but it fits very well in my favorite line now. This is going to become my Omer Shlakish. Here, this is it. This, I believe, is one of the most important lines in Shas. You hear Yosef? Listen to this. One of the most important lines in Shas. Omer Ushlakish. Ein divrei Torah miskaimim, elo b'mi shemei misatzmei elo. Torah doesn't last only to the person who kills himself on it, who sacrifices himself to it. Shenemar zoisat Torah odom kiyomuz boil. What does that mean? In order to succeed in Torah, you have to sacrifice. You can't just take it easy. You can't just float on your backyard pool with a pina colada and, 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 and grab a gemara. It's not going to last. That's not going to last. So how does it last? Oh, and I think this is very important for us, dafiyami people. What's the biggest excuse that people have not to come to the daf? It's too early. It's hard to get up early. Oh, that's me misatz me Allah. When you give up your gashmias, and one of the biggest things of gashmias is sleep, you give up your sleep 
to learn Torah, then it's Miskayim. Then it lasts. It's unbelievable. Nachamal. Omer Shlokish in Divri Torah, Miskayim, Ella, Bemish, and Mamis, Atzmi, Ella. Torah doesn't last, doesn't have a kiyum, only to the person who kills himself over it. And as the Ben Yehuda said before, when you have that tsar, and others explain as well, when you lessen the amount of food you eat, you don't fresh in a restaurant and learn Torah, it doesn't go together. When you could be memayed, your oilam hazeh, your gashmias, but I think it, the most important thing for us, it's not so much food, we're not so, okay, yeah, Sleep. Sleep is a big one. Who wants to get up early in the morning? Something. So when you get up early, you hear what's going on, and when you decide, I'm tired, and I want to get, I want to get back into my covers, and, 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 and no, it's geschmack under there, and you get up, and you force yourself to go, that's when everything's in the sky. Tremendous chos. Omar Rava. Daf Peidalet. We're holding on today's daf. Or Shavuos' daf. So going back to this idea that if I could carry my ship, it's Mechabal Tumah. By the way, it doesn't have to be humanly possible. It doesn't have to be, I have to be able to lift up my ship. It means even if a machine lifts it up, or otherwise known as an ox. It doesn't have to be me, anything. If it's liftable, it doesn't break, snap in, into two pieces, then it's Mechabal Tumah. This now, and I'll prove it to you, Shal and Shagol is saying there are three types of wagons. Only three, not four. This is better. Shkoyach Yeshua for the second type of water. This is much. Ah. The who? Which one? Which cheesecake? Yisrael Goldstein's cheesecake is amazing, says Gary. This nan, Shal and Shagol is saying, Asuyo Kikadedro. Kikatedro. So if it's shaped like a seat. So we're talking about Tumas Medrus. Tmeo Medrus. What's Medrus? If you have a Zav, Zava, or Nido, that sit on something, stand on something. We discussed this a bunch of times, that our couches are probably all Tommy Tumas Medrus, because at one point or another, there's a person that was Tommy that sat on it. So if this wagon is shaped like a seat, meaning it's meant for sitting, so Mamela, it's because Tumas Medrus, we, we discussed a few times, it has to have a shape of a seat, it has to be roy for yeshiva. If it's not meant for sitting, then the guy could say, get up, I need to do my job. If it's meant for sitting, tell me, tell me Medrus. Kemita, and if it's shaped like a bed, meaning it's like a, a pickup truck, you know, it has, a, it has a, a flat bed in the back, it's not really meant for sleeping, but it's meant to carry stuff, Tameya Tomei Meis. So then it no longer becomes Tomei Tumas Medrus because it's not meant for sitting. What Tumei does it have? Tomei Meis, meaning all the Tumas other than Tumas Medrus. Tumas Sheretz, whatever it is. Shalavanim, if this wagon is meant to transport stones, in other words, it's massive and heavy, to hire Maklum, it's not Makabal Tumah. Why? Because we had a number of times. What's Mikabal Tuma? Something that has no holes in it. But if it has holes that a pomegranate could fit through, then it's not Mikabal Tuma. So this, this apparatus, whatever this is, this wagon that could hold very large stones. Imagine something that could hold the stone of the Kaisel. It doesn't need to be a flatbed, like a piece of metal. It has slats, one slat here, then it has a, a, a break, another slat, because I'm putting a very large stone in it. So it's not Mechabal Tumah because it has all these holes in it. It's very holy. So it's tired from everything. However, if it doesn't have holes, if they're close together where it could catch pomegranates, Tmeya Tmei Meis. Then you write, it's Tomei Tumas Meis. So what's the Gemara's point? The Gemara's point is that this wagon is ginormous. It's meant to carry stones. It's like a, it's like a, a dump truck. And the only way you could pull it is with an ox. Nevertheless, it's Mechabal Tumah. So you see that something that's 
that's designed to be carried and pulled by an ox is Megabal Tumah. Then it continues, some say it's not connected, it is connected. We'll explain that this next part is connected. Shalash Tevah There are three boxes. Tevah Shepischa Metzida. If you have like a washing machine, that the door is on the side, in the front, a front loader. Tzmei Medris. Why? Because a Zov could sit easily on the top. And no one, the woman who's going to do laundry now, is not going to tell the husband, get off my washing machine. She doesn't care. She could open up the side door, the front loader, and put her laundry in. She doesn't have to say, Amoid v'nasim l'achtenu, get up and let me do laundry. So Mela, it becomes a seat. And if it becomes a seat, it's Tommy Tommy Medris. Mela Mala, but if it's a top loader, Tmeya Tmei Meis. Now when she has to do her job of laundry, she's going to say, get off my washing machine. So if she has the right to kick him off, he can't say, wait a minute, I'm not getting off. It's, it's, a, it's a chair. It's a, no. It's first a washing machine, then it's a chair. So therefore, it's not really a chair. If it's not really a chair, it's not metamitumus medris, it's only metamitumus meis. Va'abo b'mido, and the third type of box is a giant box. Abo b'mido, you have to measure it, it's so large, it's, it's, it's massive. Tahir maklum. Again, we're discussing the door is on top, it's a top loader, and it'll break, it's so big. The point is, why doesn't it mention, when I'm talking about boxes, so I have a box that has a door on the top, a door on the side, and then I have a box that's huge. When it comes to wagons, there's one that's shaped like a seat, there's one that's shaped like a bed, and there's one to carry stones. What happened to the one that's huge? Just like boxes, it says huge, the answer is because carrying stones is huge. It's one of the same. And Memela, and it tells us that carrying stones, even though I carry it with, a, with a, an animal as a schlep it, nevertheless, it's Makabal Tumor. Tanara Also, not It's not able to be sat on, so it's not, no, but then, then, it's, then that's, if you can't sit on it, that's not Tommy Tumas Medrus. Medrus and sitting. And then, then, then the other tumas have nothing to do with sitting on it. Then the makabal tumah, if they, if they, if they're able to carry stuff, if if the, if, a, if a pomegranate doesn't fall through it, then that's the that's the idea. When by regular tumas the pomegranate is the shear, and by medrus it's whether or not you can sit on it. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it says tummy mace, it doesn't only mean tummy mace; it means even tummy sharets, everything, but even tummy mace. So, we know that if a Zav, a Zava, they sit on a chair, it becomes Tomei. What if the chair is made out of earthenware? Says the Gemara, Tar. Even though this chair was designed by some artist to sit on, but it's earthenware. And earthenware is not Mechabal Tumas Medrus. Now, we're just going to have a few lines here to explain what this line is. Let's read it. If I sit on a klicheres and I'm a zav, the klicheres is tar. Rabbi Yossi says, even a ship. Even a ship what? Is tar. My Omar. It doesn't make sense. We just had a Mishnah that tells us ships are tar. Right? So what is Rabbi Yossi adding to that? He can't be adding to the Mishnah. I'm telling you, Halacha, that if Azov sits on a Klicharis, it's tar. We're talking about Klicharis. How do you touch a Klicharis and make it Tomei? Rabbi Yossi, how? Mitoichai. You have to be inside it. Then you're metamit. You, if, you, if you touch, if somebody's tummy touches the outside, not tummy. Usvino shel cheres tmeyo. So what does he say? He says that the mago is tummy and the svino is tummy if it's cheres. Kachananya, because Chananya says that an earthenware ship is tummy. Rabbi Yossi Oimer, afasvino tahiro. 
Even a ship is tar. Kitana didon. Our mission says all ships are tar. Mask of Lora Papa, my af. We need to understand how your psha fits into the words af. Af means even. So if I tell you that maga, touching is tome, right? Look what it says. It says umagoi tome. If I touch earthenware from the inside, it's tome. Comes Rabbi Yosin says, afasvina tahira. Magoi, I'm telling you, is Tomei. And he says, and even a ship is Tahar. It doesn't flow. If you told me that the Maga is Tahar, and then I say, even a ship is Tahar, it flows. A is Tahar, and I say, even B is Tahar. But if I tell you A is Tomei, so I can't, how does it fit? And even B is what? It doesn't flow. I can't tell you, a is Tomei, and even B is Tar. A is Tomei, and even B is Tar. It's not even. It should be A is Tomei, and B is Tar. Not even B is Tar. So how does it fit? So that's why he flips it around completely. If a Zav, that doesn't change. If a Zav sits on a Klicheres, it's Tar. Umagoi tomei, that doesn't change either. And if somebody touches cheres from the inside, it's tomei. So that's the important one here. And now I'm going to add on that. Rabbi Yossi, now Rabbi is going to say, and even a ship is tomei. You see how it fits now? Umagoi tomei. If I do mago, I touch from the inside, it's tomei. Comes Rabbi Yossi and says, and even a ship is tomei. Not even a ship is tar, because even a ship is tar doesn't flow. Even a ship is tomei. Umagoi tomei. Forget these words coming up. Vishal eight, pay midras, pay magad, tamay. And wood is tamay, also. Usfinas, I'm sorry, these words forget. Usfinas, I yard in Tahira. And the small little ship from the Jordan is tar. Ketane didan, like our Tanit says, all ships are tar, no matter from the Jordan, no matter Kheris, no matter what. Rabbi Yasi Oimer, Afas fino temeo. This whole list of stuff that you said is tamay, shall eight, pay midras, pay magad, tamay. And magad of Kheris is tamay. Okay, now it makes sense. Kichananya. It says that an a earthenware ship is Tomei. It says the Gemara, And how do I know this idea that earthenware is Tar? That if I, if I step, if a Zav, Zav Anida, touch, sit, not touch, sit on Klicheres, that is Tar. Omar Chizkiyad Amakrov, Isha Sheyiga B'Mishkav Voy. So the word... The word mishkavoi has two, two parts to it. Mishkav means a bed. Voi means him, the, the Zav himself. Mishkavoi. So the Gemara says, an amazing limut. Makish mishkavoi loi. There's a hekish, the bed, to the guy himself, to the Zav himself. Mahu isle tahar be mikvah. Af mishkavoi nami isle tahar be mikvah. Since the Torah says mishkavoi, his bed with him, so the bed has to be like him. What does that mean? Just like he goes into the mikvah and he becomes tar, right? A human being who's tame must go into a mikvah in order to become tar. So, too, everything that he makes tame must be able to go into the mikvah in order to become tar. What goes into the mikvah and nothing changes? The status remains the same. Cheres. What do you say? Ah, toivu v'sher is beyond it. But we're talking about an object, not a, a situation. A, a, a person that, that, that can't go to the mikvah, a nido goes on the second day, she doesn't come to her. I'm saying, an object. What kind of object cannot be put in the mikvah? Klicheres. If a klicheres is tummy, what do you do with it? Break it, smash it up into pieces. You can't put it in the mikvah. So a melo, that's how I know that a klicheres that a Zav sat on does not become Tomei. Because if you put the Klicheres in the mikvah, it wouldn't help. And we had a, a, a Hekesh, just like he himself goes into the mikvah and becomes Tar, so to the Kli. The Beri Bishmaltan, and they say a very similar thing. So again, same idea. The bed that she sits on is like her Tumah. Mahi, 
is lotar be mikvah, just like a nida goes into mikvah, she becomes tar. Avishkovanami is lotar be mikvah. So to anything she be- makes tame has to have the ability to go into the mikvah to become tar. Now the Gemara explains it beautifully. Earthenware never could be tar in the mikvah. Masev, Masev, Rabbi Allah, Mapot b'meis minayin. How do I know that a mapot? What's a mapot? A reed mat. This guy right over here, reed mat. Now, if you look carefully, this does not have a base keyboard at all. These are flat pieces of wood. Yeah? You see this? Like schach, exactly. Doesn't have a base keyboard. The outer one, that is. It doesn't have an inside that you could put something. It's a flat piece of wood. Now, we learned a second ago, or in the beginning of this year, that wood, eights, has to be like sack. And just like a sack has a base kibble, it's a bag, it holds stuff, so too wood has to hold stuff in order to become tummy. However, we know that if somebody is a is a is tame tuma zav zavanida lies on this mat, it makes it tame. So how do I know that a mapot, if, if touched by tumas maze, is tame? That's the Gemara's question. How do I know? Says the Gemara, vidinu. I have a kavachaymer that pedal on the base. You know, if you look closely, we only have to get to the Mishnah. Not too bad. Less than ten minutes. Here. Here's a small vessel. Open it up. This, if this was made out of earthenware, pretend this is earthenware. This cannot become tome from a zav. Why? Because if I'm a zav, how am I going to, the only way I can make this tome is if I get inside it. Look, I can't get inside. My finger doesn't fit in the opening. It's too small, this opening. Yeah? Too small. So, my finger can't get a tummy. What else could I do with this? Maybe I could sit on it. Well, halavai, I should be able to fit on this. Yeah, I have to lose a little weight. I cannot fit on this little guy. So, that, so tummy madras doesn't work. Not for this. Not for sitting. What else? Maybe Hesus. Oh, remember the halach of Hesus. Hesus is that if I can move this somehow, even if I blow it, I move it, if I move the hand that moves this, I'm also, I make it tummy. A zav has the ability to, to, if he moves a table, everything on the table becomes tummy. Besides this guy. Why? Because if I cannot put my finger in and make this tummy, so then the whole, the whole halach of Hesus goes away also. Similarly, what about a here? I could take a here, take one of my, my payas, and I'm, it's Tomei Tumas Zov, and I stick it right through the hole. Look, that fits in here easily. No, so maybe that should make it Tomei? No. Again, it's excluded from Tuma in this case. Typically, it would make a Kli Tomei, but, but since my finger doesn't fit in, I can't make it Tomei through my finger, I can't make it Tomei through my hair. Yet, Tomei and Bimais. If there was Rahman al Islam, a dead person in this room, then this would become Tame, Tumas oil. Yeah? Aaron, you have a shayla, I saw you were lifting your hand. This would become Tame. So a mace couldn't be with Tame. So you see, mace is stronger in a way than a Zav. A Zav has no way to be with Tame. You can't sit on it, you can't touch it, you can't move it, you can't put an ear in it. But a Tumas Mace could do it. No. No, that we're going to get to soon. No, it's open. You see, it's open. If it's open. Mapots. So we're continuing the Kavach Haimer. Mapots. A mat reed. A reed mat. A mat reed. How do you say it? A reed mat. A reed mat. A mat reed. No, that doesn't work. A mat made out of reeds, gewaldic, or a reed mat. So certainly, if a mapot, this reed mat, that I lie on it, the zav lies on it, and makes it tame, certainly it should become tame through a dead person. 
if this doesn't become tummy from a zav, but it becomes tummy from a, a mace, so of course this that becomes tummy from a zav should become tummy from a mace. Very simple. Ask the Gemara right away. Who said that if a zav sits on a lays on a mat that the mat becomes tummy? I cannot take this mat and dunk it in the mikvah, make it tar. Shani Hosom, Hoyel Vikin Biminoi. Says the Gemara, listen to this. This mat, you're right, I can't take it into a mikvah. But you know what I could do? I could take my wooden bowl and put it in the mikvah. So, in the same class, in the same category of wood, yes, this wood is pretty clear, I can't. But my bowls that are made out of wood and my spoons that are made out of wood, I could put in the mikvah. Says the Gemara, Amalei, Rachman al So I said on Shavuos that I don't remember this word in Shas. It's very rare. And this is where we take it from. So somebody said, what, is the first time Shas? Yeah. So I looked it up tonight. There's only one other place in all of Shas that has this terminology. And that, this is where we get it from. Rachman al Everybody says Rachman al From here, Shavuos dafei dalarom and beis. Rachman al Hashem yirach. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Mahay daita, from such a, 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 a logic, you tell me because there's a bowl that's made out of wood that that could go in the mikvah, so that's why my reed mat could go, it, is, is mikabal tuma? Like, what's the shaykhas? This is flat, and that's a kli. Hoyel v'kib minay, amalei, rachma al-islan, adirabba, rachma al-islan, midayda didach. So they had a rachma al-islan fight here. He says, Rahman san to him, and he says, Rahman san to you. What are you do? Oh, it's beautiful what I'm saying. Hashem, you rahman on you. You don't have my, my beautiful vart. The time am I. So what is he saying? Trey, Kroik, CV, we have, a, we have a problem. We have like sort of a contradiction. That's the possibility we had before. That Mishkova means it's a bed, and it's his bed. And because it's his bed, we said that the bed has to be like him. And like he goes into the mikvah, so the bed also has to go into the mikvah. And then there's another passage. Nothing to do with him. The bed is on its own. Meaning, I don't need to bring the bed into the mikvah. The bed will become tamay even if it can't go into the mikvah. Okay, it's sad. So therefore I have to explain, he says, Yes, be mino, mikvah. If within the category in the class called wood, there's some wood that goes in the mikvah, and even though the wood that doesn't go into the mikvah like a, a mat, that's also mikavol tuma. Oh, in b'minai makish mishkovay loy, in b'minai makish mishkovay loy. But if in the whole class and category, like like earthenware, it never goes in the mikvah. If it never goes in the mikvah, then I say, look, it has to be like him. He goes into the mikvah, he becomes tar, the zav himself, so too the kli cheres has to go in the mikvah. And if he can't go in the mikvah, the entire category doesn't go in the mikvah, therefore it's not mikabal tuma. And if I sit, if I lay down on a mat reed, uh, on, a, on a piece of kli cheres, it's not mikabal tuma. A zav is not, is not metama kli cheres when he sits on it. Zog the Gemara, Rav Amar, Medris, kli cheres, tar macha. I have another source. It says in the Apostle that if this Kli is open, you see, it's open. Open. Then it's Mechabal Tuma. It's Mechabal Tuma Ba'oyal Ames. If there's a dead person in this room, the Kli becomes Tumay, it goes through the opening. And I could listen to this unbelievable word that Rabbi says. Hoyesh Summit Puzzle Allah. But if it's completely sealed, Taru, if it's in a room with a dead person, this does not allow the tumma to go penetrate into the klicheres because it's closed, and klicheres only becomes tummy from the inside. Mela, it's tar. Says Rava, mi lo yaskinu di yachadinu li ishto nida v'ka amarachmana tar. What's going on here? Says Rava, unbelievable. It doesn't say anywhere in the pasuk that a nida didn't sit on it. It says, if the kli is closed, it's tar. End the story. Do anything you want to the kli, it's tar. Okay. Now what if a, a nida or a zav, one of these guys that has tumas haguf, sits on it? It should become tame. And if it becomes tame, we have a rule that if a kli is tame, 
then it cannot protect the content of the, what's, whatever's inside the clea. Because the actual clea, it doesn't have a shield. Imagine. The shield is broken. It's a, it's a bad shield. It's a Tomei shield. Tomei shield cannot protect penetration of Tumah. So therefore, if that Kli was in a, in a room with a dead person, whatever's inside should be, should be t- Tomei regardless of the fact that it's closed. Oh. And Anita sat on it. He says, Rabbi, you see from here that even if Anita sat on it, she's not going to make it Tomei Tumas Medrus. That's my right. You're asking me, how do I know that if a Zav, Zav, Anida sit on a Kli Cheres, it doesn't become Tomei Tumas Medrus? Because if it did, then this Kli that she sat on wouldn't have the protection to protect the inside. Whatever's inside. And the Torah says that it's protected as long as you close it. But how can it protect it? It's Tomei from the outside. The answer is it's not Tomei from the outside. Because even if she sat on it, it's Tar. Have a beautiful week. I'll see everybody tomorrow, Be'ez HaShem, at 7.15, bright and early. You want to hit that? Yeah, Yishkoyach. What did you say?